Hello, everyone. I'm Jean-Claude at Beyond Mystic, and welcome to this deep woo-woo Friday night episode entitled The Quantum Woo. Tonight, my guests are Maryam Henin and John Hutchison. You can find John, of course, at johnkhutchison.com. And, of course, you can find Maryam on her YouTube channel here at Maryam Henin. A big warm welcome to both of you. John, Maryam, how are you guys? Hello, hello, hello. Greetings from Miami. Hi. And, John, how are you? Oh, excellent. Thank you. How are you, Nancy? Good, thank you. And please introduce your lovely uh, companion there, John. Mm -hmm. You have to introduce me. Oh, I do. Yes, it's me, Hutchison. Welcome. Nice to have you back. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us here on this live interactive show on Friday night. Of course, this is part two of this uh, Quantum Woo with John Hutchison and Mariam Hanin. Mariam, why don't you take a minute or two here to recap for the audience, perhaps who haven't seen episode number one, how you got connected with the legend that is John Hutchison <laughs> and how we went about doing the first show and then why we're doing this part two here with the amazing technology of the Oracle Room. So let's start laying down some track here for Absolutely. the audience Absolutely, I will summarize. Good evening, okay. everyone. So I happened to interact with John in a documentary that I was cast on the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, he was in British Columbia and I was in Egypt. And I think maybe once we, we spoke, but it was we were recreating the call. And then after the fact, I found out that John is a, a legend and in trying to find guests, is having a chat with, sorry, there's a reverb. I think it's coming from your speaker. So if you can bring your speaker volume down just a tad, Mariam. I've muted John already. Uh, and folks, we're having some technical issues just before we started the show. So please bear with us. We're going to try to do our very best here tonight, but our connection three-way tonight is very poor. All right, Mariam, keep going. So in looking for guests, and then just happened coincidentally that um, John has had an impact um, for Jean-Claude and uh, suggested, hey, let's get him on. During the years, he and, he and John, John and I had connected over the documentary. I was trying to get a copy of it. And then when I reconnected, I had the pleasure to speak with Nancy and definitely wanted to bring her on. And during the first show, we kind of touched base and got into some of John's work. And during that time, he brought up the Oracle Room, which is in a way kind of a seance, um, but with electric currents. Um, of course, they will do better justice to explain. So it's kind of a seance Ouija board kind of mix. So welcome. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Mariam, for that. And of course, yes, uh, John did have an impact on me as a young lad. I used to watch his stuff way back when, I believe in the early 90s uh, on the Discovery Channel or the Learning Channel or one of those things. And I remember saying to John in the last episode, thank you uh, for waking up a lot of people in humanity and inspiring them to get into the woo, so to speak. So I big thank you to you, uh, John, for all of that inspiration across all the years and for all your amazing inventions. Um, Mariam, before we start, let me see here to, I have the link uh, for your um, uh, documentary with John. So I'm going to bring that on the screen for the audience who haven't seen that. And now what I'm also going to do here is let the audience know that if you follow me here on beyondmystic.net forward slash notes, I've copied the notes for tonight's episode, including the links to the videos and to the pictures uh, that John is going to share with us here uh, tonight. So if you guys want to follow us al uh, along with us, that's the best way to do so. Uh, so John, what I'm going to do now is just unmute your mic and bring you on the main screen here. So John, explain to us a little bit uh, at how you started. What was the impetus or the genesis for this idea of yours to create this Oracle Room? Set that up for the audience a little bit here before we get into the pictures. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, Nancy was inspiring to, to do that, and I set up a spider web, if you want, for a, a grid of electromagnetic frequencies for signal generators to be received by yet another bank radio here. And simply uh, try to catch something. Just see what happens. Just inspired. 
by a lot of different scientists over the years, like William Tiller, Jack, George Jack Houck, and McDonald Douglas, and Colonel Alexander, and many other scientists I've known over many years that are into studying parapsychology, paranormal activity. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so. Well, and I, I do a tremendous amount of research into ancient documents and in religious documents. Um, I think that there's a lot of information there if you take out the religion. You know, what is it that they're trying to tell you? And um, you, know, you look at what happened with the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant but you go back to um, the book of Genesis and you got the story of Adam and Eve in a garden and they're given all the, the options to eat of any of these, these trees, these fruit, but don't go eat of that or you're going to die. Okay. But when you get into the, the actual language, um, was it Adam and Eve? Was it an actual human? Were they humans? Okay. That's, that's the one first question. The second thing is, um, and I had a problem with this since I was a kid, because what did they eat from? Do you guys know what, the, what was the bad tree to eat from? So we we don't even we don't even connect this. We just hear the story. It was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so if you, if you are conscious, you are able to choose, right? Because if you're unconscious, if you're asleep, you're not choosing anything, right? If you're dead, you're not choosing anything. A rock, I don't know if it's conscious because it really can't choose. How to move but i i can i can move my arm i can choose that right so how do you know what is the good choice and what's the bad choice you have to have the knowledge of good and evil and the serpent dude says hey you do that you eat of the knowledge of good and evil and you'll be like gods well okay you know why because when you choose you can create you can manipulate you can move matter and you can become as gods in that you are choosing and creating. So, but when you do that, um, the Adam and Eve uh, folks that were there, um, then uh, they're going to surely die. So are we talking about a different dimension? Are they in the second dimension, the first dimension? And by making that choice to gain consciousness to gain the ability to choose okay they had to choose to become conscious right um now we're thrown into vessels into bodies and my body operates without my knowledge without you know my heart beats i don't tell my heart to beat um you know i can hold my breath but not for long because my body's going to want that breath right so we're in, so now I'm into a system. My consciousness is now in a body that it's going to go feed the trees. I mean, there, there is a, it's finite amount of time that my consciousness can coexist in this body. So the big question I had was what happens when the body, which is the vessel, which is the thing that I get to move around on this planet and, and I, my consciousness is to do this. So, um, you know, what happens? What happens? Because energy doesn't die. Energy is movement. It's just going from place to place to place to place. And so there's your brain waves, your consciousness, you know, however it is that we, we quantify what is alive or not in between our ears, does, does that still exist once the mechanism that we get to move around isn't able to exist anymore. And so um, we had a couple of people that passed away, their bodies passed away. One of them, my brother, who was an electrical engineer, and um, uh, Ken Shoulders, who was close to John, um, those were the two that we picked on first, but there's a lot of people that we've gone in and asked questions to. Mm -hmm. um, and we got a system down by um, 
the selective voltmeter that John has set up that's kind of monitoring this web that he's created, um, if, if there's a consciousness that can um, move energy in response to a question that we have, um, and, and really the, we, we tried like open-ended open -ended questions and it just made a mess. So we just, we got a system, yes and no, yes and no. No means no response, everything's quiet. Yes is uh, different pieces of equipment depending on which consciousness likes to mess with which equipment will go off. Now, what, what we've got here is when we were working through that system and um, my dead brother actually got into that selective voltmeter and you can hear um, it, it It has a, this is whining noise and then they'll go blah, 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 and you hear a no where I'm asking him if he can make a, a no response. Um, so that was, that was one of the early videos that we've done. We've done dozens of them. And it's actually getting a little boring. So if, if any of the people that are watching have some good yes or no questions for us, that'd be great. Because, I mean, we've asked all kinds of things. We've asked for Jesus. Is there a Jesus? It's dead silent. Okay, so that kind of confirmed what I already knew, that the, the guy's name really isn't Jesus, for one thing. <laughs> and, and, what, and what is, it's like, the religion is just giving us these little tiny clues. They're not giving us um, enough. To, it's, it's almost like they give us enough clues so that now they can manipulate the, the minds of men and create a religion. And we're, we're just looking at the science of this. You know, the show's deep, woo-woo. Well, you know, woo-woo could be a science, could, could be a, a religion. But we're looking for the science of w the information that we have from people that have been on this planet before, and they've they've dropped clues all over the place. So it's trying to pull it together and actually um, have uh, results that are un undeniable. Yeah, that people without their bodies still exist, and they are able to do things. We, in fact, we had a session where. We asked if they can manipulate matter, and the, the response was yes, and then a whole bunch of crazy shit happened, and the next day we went in for a session and said, did you guys do that, and the answer was yes. So it isn't just that they can do something through um, our equipment, they, they've also shown that they can um, manipulate matter as well. Wow, that's fascinating. Um, Sage in the chat says, you're great, Nancy. Yes, I agree. That's amazing. Thank you for that uh, description. And J Crypto Minded says, hey, can we ask if Biden is really Biden? <laughs> Are we in the matrix is the second question. I'm wondering, did you guys ask questions about that? Well, Nancy, I mean, go ahead. We could ask that, but... Can I say I mean, something? If we, we could... We You wanted to say something? Go ahead, Maria. Yeah, I want to just go back and establish what it is you're doing and ask a couple of questions. One, have you figured out if someone is going to the other side, uh, whether there's it's a choice to stay? Is it a, in a limbo state where there's electricity and you're picking up on that? What, what determines them returning well, back? I, I I think with with my my brother and Ken Shoulders, um, they both didn't want to go. I mean, I, I think that the, it was sudden for my brother, and um, there was um, a sudden advancement in cancer with Ken Shoulders, and we you know we saw him shortly before he passed. And I he didn't want to. He he, had, he was too busy with the stuff that he was working on. So I would mm. think that um, those guys. Uh, would not go to the light. Um, okay, so think about this for a second. Um, your sperm and, and you go through this tunnel <laughs> and, and, and you get through this tunnel 
And all of a sudden there's this glow and you go through the glow, the glow is the egg. And you get up to the egg and you go into the light and boom, they're all your relatives. It's, it's, it's all your, your genes, your DNA, okay? It's there. So, it's, it's, so when people have these near-death experiences and they, they feel like they're going through a tunnel and going to the light and meeting their relatives, well, that's just what happened when, when your body was made. <laughs> when, when, when that, you know, these systems or patterns are repeating patterns. And um, my brother was one that wouldn't go to the light. I just know, you know, he, he, he's hung around. He messed with so much stuff after he passed away um he uh when um i was going to the funeral home um and it was an hour drive to get there and i had my phone and three of my three numbers home office and mobile phone for my brother and i said who am i supposed to get a hold we we're in the middle of some important work and how am i supposed to get a hold of you and clear as a bell he started talking to me in the car i mean his it was just I could hear him clear as a bell talking about all this electronic stuff. I had not met John. I had no idea what a watt, a volt, or an amp is. <laughs> and um, so he's, so I get a hold of somebody, called on my cell phone, and my, the guy on the cell phone couldn't hear what I was hearing. So I'm relaying this information and trying to get some answers from what my dead brother was talking about with electronics. I had absolutely no background in electronics. So, um, yeah, they, they hang around, if, especially, you know, I think when, if it's a sudden, you know, departure from, from their vessel, from their body, I don't, I don't have any question that they hang around. And if you, you know, if you're going back to the light, do you get to go back to the Garden of Eden, you know, and, you know, hang out there and not have any choice anymore? I don't know. That's one of the things that 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 was that we've been asking. Do you still have choice now that you don't have a body? Do you still have choice? And the the response has been yes. Now, it could be that these folks still have choice because they haven't, you know, trucked on back and, you know, got with the group and went to heaven or hell. I don't know. So that's that's the setup, and we've got um, two uh, floor mirrors and uh, a parabolic mirror in the front there. And then there's a transducer, which is from a, a sonar unit? What was that from? Oh, uh, I have a Navy, US Navy's uh, bearing titanate cylinder for sonar. Yeah, but the one on the bottom, and then there's a bearing titanate on top. Yeah, that's a bearing titanate as well. Yeah, but the one on the bottom was from the Doppler system, right? Yeah. Okay, so John scavenges stuff. We get stuff at salvage, we get stuff at auctions and stuff. Like we got a Doppler system that they use for tracking the bottom of the ocean floors. Yeah. And John scavenged a piece out of that and put it in the Oracle room as a, a mechanism to um, increase the signal mm -hmm. that we're um, trying to get. Then there's a, a helmet, a hat that I made out of one very, 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 very long piece of coated copper wire. And uh, it's, it's in the shape of all these different Mobius um, windings. And there's several layers of the Mobius is on there. So your brain has magnetite in it. And the wire, when it's, when we've, we have done all kinds of experiments with that helmet and we hooked it up to the tones that we use for eliminating the radioactive contamination. And that will set up a magnetic field within each of those Mobius windings. And so your magnetite in your head, you know, you've got a lining of that in your head, and you put that helmet on and, and throw out tones, and it reminds the magnetite in your brain. And it feels pretty good. Kind of buzzes you down your neck and into your arms and legs. Um, so that in Can this I say something? Is Sorry. Up. Can I say something, Nancy? There, at the Bulletproof yeah. Con, at the bulletproof conference i was at this biohacking conference there was a uh, a brain gadget that looked a lot like that and then it it um added pulses and different different lights but i wonder that's made out of copper 
Right. It's it's the same wire that's used for windings for like a motor. And you stack up windings and then put current through it, like like see current with the tones. The tones going through that wire is going to create a magnetic field. So um, so you've got a magnetic field then that it's that's going to um, attract, repel the magnetite that's in your brain. You, you're, our brains are lined with magnetite. Magnetite, um, I think well, maybe that's where the, we hold all the memories is in the magnetite. Because they, when they look at magnetite, they can tell you that four million years ago there was an earthquake or, uh, you know, that, that it's by looking at the magnetite. And we've um, used magnetite in a device um, that was made um, to record the frequencies, the radio frequencies and the audio tones on it. And then um, uh, those were set up in a grid across the U.S., some in Australia. Um, I think we talked about that. Um, so the magnetite is kind of a, a key element in the, the planet for holding memory. So uh, that that's that's what I don't know what else you want me to know. That that's then then. Well, I, I know I know that copper. Uh, there's a there's a guy that makes starfire water and I'd go to festivals and he'd have this copper ring um, different sizes and whenever I put the copper on I also have copper bracelets like Wonder Woman that it, it has a very positive feeling at least I, I wonder do you know what the mechanism is? What is the mechanism for the copper? I know when I work with copper, I can start tasting it in my mouth. I think it's uh, it produces SOD. SOD, that's sod. It's that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. for it. people with arthritis. It helps get rid of it. Um, the brain has weak magnetic field, being nucleic acid in the brain. Great. Um, it's slightly magnetic. Great. Um, Okay, well, that's copper. Is I like copper. Just that when I'm working with it, I get a huge taste in my mouth. Not, uh, brass, well, not so much with brass metal, which is zinc and copper. But it's been a tin. Yeah. Do you realize all the minerals that you take, you know, that you have supplements for, we talk about, those are metals. Those are actual metals. And um, the crystal power cell technology that John developed is is when you take a, a metal like a copper that has a positive potential and you put it against a negative potential like um, aluminum okay mm -hmm. um, there's a difference between those potentials a positive and negative and that's uh, what the power cells pick up for energy that's why they're like batteries that never need to be recharged it's because all they're doing is picking up that differential and your body operates the same way. You have all these minerals, which are also metals, and they line up, you know, microscopically, and boom, that's where your energy is coming from. It's from those potentials, those differentiate the differentiations and the, the um, positive and negative of the minerals, metals in your body. Yeah, so, I, I, I say I it's very important to take trace minerals. It's very important to add minerals because that's how you're going to create electricity in the body and energy. Right. Like magnesium. Maybe we use magnesium in the power cells and crystal power cells. Magnesium is one that that um, it like slicks it up so it moves fast, right? So, so the, but we don't learn this stuff. I mean, these... I have said this over and over again. We don't, we don't, we should have, 10th graders should be able to tell you the stuff I'm telling you. 5th graders should. You know, when you look at the videos that we have, we don't comprehend but a very small fraction of what this 3D actually is. We only, we have this, this vessel, this body that we're in, the only with touch, whatever is touching the light frequencies in our in our ears, you know the actual pressures. That's that's all that we have in order to count what's going. On.
We seem to be losing connection with Nancy and John here. You guys are fading out. Uh, you're <laughs> fading out of the space-time continuum. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's <laughs> yeah, like we, we just, just like we just got them on another planet. We made contact with them. Okay, John, you're back, so, and I was just being uh, funny here. I was saying that you were phasing out of the space-time <laughs> continuum here. We could barely hear you. <laughs> okay, you're back. So let me uh, cue up this video of this experiment, uh, the one that you just sent here where you're asking Ken Shoulders and Bill Kaiser or Kaiser here uh, for the yes or no questions. Now, um, before I play the clip, Nancy, can you explain, um, this is of course two images superimposed, explain what the technology is first on the left-hand side of the screen here. Start at the top and uh, direct me here. Um, upper left-hand side is an oscilloscope. Um, I believe the oscilloscope is hooked up um, to a bearing titanate cylinder, which is being used as a receiver, as a transducer. Um, then, on, then between the green thing and the type is a black and white old TV set, little tiny one. And that that's interesting because it'll go like it's off now. It'll go off in response. Um, then it, we've got the orange one, and that's one hooked up to the, the Mobius helmet. Um, so there, there could be, re you know, we just side. Whoops, we got a different picture. The right okay, side you're, uh... is a green. With the, in the, it's in the middle bottom, okay? The green, yep. That's a spectrum analyzer. Um, that's actually equipment that Ken Shoulders worked on developing. And so he likes that. So we get a lot of response depending on where we put that spectrum analyzer on what frequency to analyze, what range. Um, just got to find the one that he's on to, to mess with. And on the left, some left lower left-hand corner is the selective voltmeter. The selective voltmeter um, we has an output for audio and that audio went right into the camera so when i'm asking questions i have no idea what the responses are i don't know if this is working at all if they're responding at all until i take it all together and the big uh, rectangle in there that's the um infrared of the oracle room of the camera running in infrared with a, a, it feeds right into the computer. And that's the camera uh, used um, when we were on the Gulf of Mexico and you see those other videos of the frequencies going all over our faces and at the end of one where this energy is coming right out of my mouth, that, that's that camera. It's, it's a Panasonic, it's been used in a lot of um, ghost hunter kind of, um, um, uh, videos and stuff. It's it gives you um, production quality, TV broadcast quality. Um, so it's it's a very good camera. It's not you know some junky little thing. It costs a couple hundred bucks. That's an expensive camera. Okay. So that's that's and you know we get different things. Sometimes when John was talking to his mom, something popped out of the parabolic mirror. You know, it's just we we don't know. We just let it run. And there's been ones where we change the camera angle and show my head and all kinds of stuff is buzzing on my head. So, but this one was, we're working through the testing. If we're even contacting people, yeah, it's right about there. Maybe another minute or so is when my, my brother responds. So the selective voltmeter has this high whining noise and then it'll go through this and, and I'll, I'll do a baseline where nothing, nobody's there, nobody's in the room, and I'll do a baseline to see if it's cycling at certain, you know, making noises on its own cycle. And then we compare the baseline to an actual um, person being in the Oracle room. And this was one where it really showed up that there was a response on the selective voltmeter. 
Hmm. You, look, you know what would be what would be cool next time if we do this episode we can have your laptop connected not in the wi-fi but in the oracle room and we can have people from the audience ask questions for you guys in a live show that could be cool that all right would be very cool let Are me we, try to play, play this, this? Clip for the audience yeah. uh, go ahead Marianne. go ahead yeah, i was gonna say can we play it yeah, so I put the link in the live chat, guys, because uh, I'm not sure the sound is going to come through um, here because of the distortion of what the actual audio file sounds like. I'm going to try to play it, but if you don't hear it through the screen, of course, you have the own link there, and you can click on it and watch it on your own computer. So let me try to put this, and while I do that, I'm going to mute all of us here to make sure this audio is the best possible. So let me mute John and uh, Marianne, and here we go here. Okay, hold on a second here. Let me see if I can readjust our volume. I hope that was coming through okay for uh, the audience members. Can you hear that okay, Marianne, from your end? Yes, yes. Okay. And so, uh, Nancy, let me bring you back on. For some reason, Nancy, your mic is muted. Did you mute on your side? I can't unmute you. Okay. Nancy, what's going on? There you go. Okay, so Nancy, uh, explain what we were just seeing there. Well, um, it's kind of jumpy for, for the, if you go right, right onto YouTube. Actually, it's a private video, so only people that that we sent that to in December, and you guys, you know, with your people watching, have uh, access to that. And because you know, we're just messing around trying to figure out what we're doing. So anyway, that that um, there's you can. It was hard to hear my voice, but you. But I was asking my brother for a yes or no, and you hear that. Rah, 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 no. That was my brother. Okay, so that's fascinating. And he's done it. Yeah, he's. he's he, we got it down now. Um, no is nothing. Don't mess. In fact, we had. The, I had this little discussion with everybody. Now, don't mess with any of the equipment while I do the baseline. And when I come in and ask questions, I only want responses for us because other people get stories and get we because where everything's just like it's like I you know open ended questions don't work so uh, because it's special and then I've had a group together that that it's like okay now we just one at a time one at a time respond so yeah. Yeah, Very and, cool. you know, I've, I've asked, Sorry, are the mirrors there in, in the first shot to add, create a portal to amplify? What's the mirrors for? Well, like if you, the, it, Moody and his stuff would work with, with near life, ex, near death, near life, near life, you know, his experience. Is he had an oracle of psychomantium. And you know, with the mirrors, but I thought, well, let's get two of them and kind of face each other. And we got the parabolic, and I've had the parabolic on the ceiling and done different things and had different lights directed in different areas to see. Um, because at the room, go you know, it's a completely dark room, and if you have no light, you got nothing in the mirror, but if you've got just a, a slight ambient and trying to like light up maybe the, the transducer, you know, something where in the middle of the parabolic, we're trying to concentrate the energy. And so that um, 
spot where you see the infrared, which is just a whole mess of, of um, uh, static, if you go frame by frame, you can see all kinds of different patterns and things that are happening. You blow it up and go frame by frame and you can see stuff. But yeah, that's, we just, we, we, we spent years uh, with, with the cameras, with the, yeah. You're on mute. You're on oh, mute. No. Okay. okay so, sorry about that, guys. All right. That's fascinating. Oh, I'm, I, I want to apologize for the audience. We're having all of these issues yeah. with the sound and the volume. And of course, we're doing a visual uh, show and tell presentation without the video show and tell. So I apologize, guys. We're doing our best here. Man, that's fascinating. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nancy, for all of your explanation. It gives us a good idea of what you're doing here. Now, uh, you sent me a couple of pictures also. Maybe we should. Uh, start winding down the show here with some of those pictures and perhaps we can reconvene for a part three and try to readjust our sound here because the audience is having trouble hearing you guys explain all of this and I want to make sure they're getting 100% of the conversation. So maybe uh, for the third show, we can get back at this. In the meantime, uh, you sent me a couple of pictures here, John, uh, before the show. Explain to me, uh, John, what's on the screen here? What are we looking at? <laughs> That's our kids. That's our kids. Or that's, they adopted me. I'm their pet. Actually, they're ravens. You have the, two uh, ravens? Oh, yeah, yeah, we ravens. got a whole murder. Or is yeah, it a conspiracy? A, wow. Conspiracy. wow. I, have about, that's um, I have about um, 20 raven buddies. You're uh, on mute, Jean-Claude. Is it a murder of ravens or a murder of crows? I just had this conversation the other day on another the show. Which is it? It's a murder of crows, but you could say raven but somebody said it was they? a conspiracy <laughs> of ravens <laughs> it's a conspiracy of ravens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay uh, 20 of them that wow that name some of them i got crabby the raven i want to meet Jordan. them oh good heaven yeah. you love them they love you too yeah they're very talkative where are they, they? what's their they're, names oh their names there's a crabby the raven there's a Source with the raven. There's you, ooh, ooh, one that goes, ooh, ooh, that's grandpa. Time. That's grandpa. Uh, one says hello and clickety click and foghorn and um, old bird. And uh, <laughs> it just and then the kids come, but the, the yeah, parents I mean, eat that. first. That was interesting. Little ones don't get to eat until the big <laughs> ones. And they have did they you have and... them from babies or did they just no. show up? No, they, they're, they're actually why we're here. Yeah. Because, because we were looking for a place and these big black birds kept following us around when we were in this town and they'd come in you know we'd stop and all these big birds would come in and and so they have um set up a system of what is it instead of a drive-in restaurant we've got a fly-in <laughs> restaurant That's where right. we feed them and they come in and with their group and i love and crows it's, and ravens oh yeah, yeah they're really yakky and stuff and that's awesome so, it's a lot of fun i read food and that and i do them too i'll stop on the sun sunday and talk with like i'll do the raven taco and they do that back to me so yeah no, cool. <laughs> hey john the roof, the roof the last that's amazing. Uh, John, let's finish the show here on this one again. I'm seeing the chat. A lot of people are having trouble hearing us. So I, I want to maybe round this show up here and let's reconvene for maybe a part three if we can fix all of our audio issues here. But explain to the audience what this picture is here uh, and why you're sending this to uh, to me here for the show. What's going on in this picture? Okay, that's, uh, I got permission to take a, uh, somebody for Herman Zimmerman to ask somebody to take a picture of us standing in Cork's bar. Deep Space Nine, Star Trek, um, and I have hosted uh, myself, controllers, um, NASA, Henry Dakin, Alfred von Liechtenstein. How many people do you think there were? Oh, uh, very I think about 20 people. Yeah, they, they hung out for about uh, two weeks trying to come up with solutions for eliminating radioactive contamination. And Star Trek that hosted it, Mrs. Rodberry, who's Ian's friend, by the way. Center of facts and uh, 
For me, I'm a hardcore Trekkie. I thought I died and got a hemorrhoid. <laughs> as soon as you sent me the picture, I didn't see it. I'm like, wait, is, isn't that Quark's bar? And of course, I'm a big fan also, and I used to watch uh, Deep Space Nine for sure. Wow, that's fascinating, John. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, on more ship too there. The stage has got all these different areas to go in, and they film. And there's a uh, um, Klingon um, warship. There's a German Dar warship and other warships. Point of time. I'm just going like this. I've got to get pictures. I've got to get pictures. <laughs> Herman said, okay, guards around. You can try to get the two shots. Well, that's cool. Like a kid in a candy score. Oh, right. Okay, uh, Mariam, any last words before we uh, finish the show here this evening? Uh, anything you want to share with the audience here? And of course, where can we find your work here moving forward until we meet again next week? I just wanted to just touch upon this magnetic thing. Okay. So I, I got this at a Bulletproof Conference, and it's supposed to create a magnetic field so I wanted to ask you what, what you think and just just if you could give me a moment just to actually give properly um, explain what this is. So it says choose how you feel and the technology is supposed to impact your, your mental state. She so I want up. to know. I froze up. Hello? Keep, keep going, Mariam. Okay. So I want to know, as yeah, someone who, up. Who, you can hear me fine, right, John Claude? Uh, you're breaking up on my end as well. I can, yeah. There's a lot of interference in the sound. Really? I don't think it's your mic, Mariam. It's our connection. There's something weird going on. Okay, test, test, test. I I hear you now, but if John can't hear you, he's not going to be able to answer your question. Okay. Uh, John and Nancy, can you hear um, uh, Mariam now? We can hear her now. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. okay. There's a bit of a delay. Keep going, Mariam. Let's try it. Okay. I'm just trying to find the 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 part of, of basically you wear it around your neck. It's uh, works on magnetics, and it's supposed to have different frequencies, and so it's it's let's say happy hour is the frequency of nicotine. So is is there any basis from your expertise to have something work with magnetic, the magnetic field by wearing it around your neck? So there there's different programs like wake up, deep sleep. I just started experimenting with it. Actually, yes, I experienced the uh different kind of medical doctors when I was living actually with a medical doctor in Austria. Uh, Dr. Margarita Kokoschnig and Peter Kokoschnig had similar devices for if you wanted to get healed from smoking or other things. Well, this is like a piece more. of jewelry that they're talking about. Well, it's possible. I mean, I, I, to me, it was kind of... I, you need to get an O-scope and, and hook it up and see yeah. what kind of frequencies on it. I mean, you, 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 people say it, mm -hmm. but you need to verify it. And um, if it's got a magnetic field, well, shoot, everything's got a fucking magnetic field. <laughs> yeah, it's saying, it's saying that it employs, it, it employs different low energy magnetic fields. Um, and mm -hmm. so some people wear it, some people wear it like a halo on their head depending and there's different sizes but i do feel like w when i've taken it off um i felt like oh i like this on me it makes me feel good so i'm wondering if it's placebo it says so like you can experience you can experience coffee without the shakes or alcohol without the hangover sleeping aids without the grogginess so in, in essence, can we emulate with magnetic fields certain frequencies? I would say yes, in a way. Um, a good thing to have, a tool to have, if you have an iPhone or, I don't have a phone, I just got an old iPad here, but you can download a app, which is a magnetometer. Ma magnetometer? A magnetometer, and uh, what's the other one? It measures the 
X, Y, Z axis of the waves that come through space. And you got a lot of fun with it. You can pick up magnetic fields like cars going down the highway. You can pick them yeah. up. Yeah. Um, going over the bridge. Going over the, the bridge. Yeah. Try it with um, device there. I don't know what's in the device. I know that there are some that are just like uh, a coil of wires stuck on a plate of metal. And then they, they say it's this magic vortex. But... I don't know, you know, I I would have to look at it. I had was gifted one of those ones and it never did anything for me. In fact, I felt worse wearing it. So um, hmm. it, it's, you just have to look at that and say, how do you validate your claims? Do you know where it was made? It's made here. I mean, it's patented, it's one, tons of awards it was it was had a booth unfortunately i just started experiencing it so i haven't done my homework it's something that i want to offer and i definitely believe in frequencies and i, I believe there's a lot of interference from emfs that mm -hmm. stand in the way of us reaching our potential and channeling creativity and so if something can protect or create a magnetic field, um, then I'm all all for it. But I I haven't properly done a deep dive. Let me. I'm going to show you a magnetic field. Okay. Move any movement <laughs> when you got movement, you've got a magnetic field. So there's it, it's, it's what frustrates me is. Um, particular claims being made and it sounds good but um, you've got to validate it and people that make all kinds of claims for what it is that they're selling where is the validation you know if, if there are if there's independent peer reviewed like when we were in the Gulf of Mexico and cleaning the Gulf waters I had independent scientific review of samples before and after. You know, it's one thing just to say, hey, you know, this works, but it's another thing to prove it works and to have someone that isn't financially interested in the process to review it. So. Bob Neiman? Yeah, Bob Neiman was and, independently and, uh, reviewing it. Can you just go, I'm sorry, my keyboard's not working. Can you just go to HAPB? B E E. It has the motto of the uh, of the honeybee. So I'm sorry I can't type. But if you can, if you want to share, well, you can just send. You want to just send us a link. Sure, I'm just, we're sharing it with the audience. With with the audience, I I can assure you that they've done. Um, you know, this is patented and they've gotten funding and it endorsed by Dave Asprey, and so the, there's legitimacy i'm just curious with your expertise i'm going to start offering it yeah because it's been like a week and i i really like the feel i i just unfortunately next time i'll be able to You're all, articulate it's all um, better that's a that's a nice way to wear, wear it my head's too too small for that um and then also jc i can put my tip jar if you can put it for me i'm sorry I can't hear you. Sorry about that. Um, do I have your link, the last one for this, Mariam? I don't know. If you can't put no. it in the... Uh... I'm not able to type. Ah. It's just Mariam dash Hanane at Venmo. Oh, wait. I have it here on another file. Hold on for a second here. Okay. There you go, guys. Oh, look. Amazing JP even plugged it. <laughs> There you go. Awesome. Okay. Um, again, guys, uh, let's see. We just lost John and, and Nancy again. Hold on a second here. Um, 
Yeah, horrible night for the connection, guys. I'm really, really sorry. I apologize for all of these weird sound and audio video disruptions here. Um, okay, so let's start wrapping up the show, Mariam, and let's try to do this again here if we can fix uh, the audio quality and the video quality uh, coming from John. In the meantime, guys, uh, please do uh, follow Mariam Henin here on YouTube, and you can find her also on Twitter and at Honey Colony. And of course, coupon code Beyond Mystic is still available, and that will give you 10% off of uh, the beautiful products there at honeycolony.com and of course you can follow our friend john here at john k hutchison.com and of course you can follow me please do remember to like share and subscribe here on our third backup channel and finally of course this was part two <laughs> part two of three of mariam Henin and john hutchison for the quantum woo thank you so much mariam for being here and thank you so much everyone for joining us and uh, we'll see you soon have a great weekend everyone thank au revoir you. bye, -bye.